Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, it's a shame we can't all be together in Dubai. I, I happen to be presently in Canada. It's about four o'clock in the morning, so I hope I can remain coherent for the next few hours. But I want to welcome you uh, again to this HSR 2020 uh, skills sharing session on systems thinking for district health managers. Uh, it's particularly gratifying for me to have a chance to be part of this because it was about 20, 25 years ago when I was working in the Ministry of Health Health Systems Research Unit of the of Tanzania uh, that I first learned about the incredible power of systems-wide approaches to district health systems. And ever since then, I've been promoting systems thinking in health systems. <clears throat> so it's really great that at this conference, we have a, a, a chance to talk about this and, e and even hear from some districts who are applying uh, the latest tools for systems thinking at the district level. And I, I feel this is really important that we're talking about district health systems because the district is really, if you think about it, the lowest level of the health system where all the key elements of the health system are present. You have <clears throat> almost every district has a hospital, has, has uh, tertiary, has secondary, has primary health care facilities. It has all of the health prof key health professionals that normally assist at, in a full health system are present at a district level. Um, you have the lowest level of the system that makes plans and budgets. Uh, you have the lowest level of the system that has all six of the building blocks. Um, it's the aggregation point for the first aggregation point for health management information that flows up into the into the system. Um, and it's where street level policy is often uh, set. So districts are where the rubber hits the road. And um, it's, it's really incredibly important that systems thinking is part of the the toolbox of, of those who manage um, uh, district uh, for health. So um, my, my task today is to <clears throat> really give you, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, an overview of systems thinking for those of you who are, are, are new to this, have been hearing about systems thinking because there's been a lot of talk about it at the national level, at international levels in the research community, but less so at the subnational district levels. And so uh, we thought it'd be good to have uh, spent about 10 minutes just going over the basic fundamentals of systems thinking. And then Daniel Kobos will come in and introduce some of the tools that we think are particularly important for uh, districts and district health managers um, and district health researchers to use in, for when they apply systems thinking. And uh, I, I like this, this quote that uh, if you think about it, it's true. Every system is perfectly constructed to do what it does. And if you don't like the product of, of the system, then we have to change the system. We have to fix the system. Now, the trouble is systems are really resistant to being changed. They have their own behavior. They make their own behavior. It's true of all, of all systems. And those who manage, who try to manage systems are often overloaded and too busy to, uh, to take the, the time and trouble uh, it is necessary to really think through uh, what is really uh, the best way to manage and operate. So we really need to think differently when we talk about system change. And so systems thinking is, is really a language, it's a discipline, it's, it's, it's many things that, that come together to help us change the way we think, the way we approach things. We've all been trained in classical ways, in reductionist ways uh, to, to take things apart and understand them uh, and how they operate as a whole. And that's not the best way to do systems thinking. So we need to, to change our thinking uh, to deal with the complexity of, of systems and particularly health systems, but also the complexity of communities and society. And that requires uh, an ability to communicate with some common language uh, with others and to be able to share new ways of understanding what's going on in the system. We have to change our behavior, uh, not just our behavior, but uh, our behavior as part of the system. And it's the system behavior that ultimately we want to help help manage. And so we have to work against the incredible complexity uh, that the system has. System thinking allows us to actually try out and identify in ahead of time and try to imagine the consequences of some of the things that we do in the system. And it gives us more possible actions and we can, it can help us think through the unintended consequences of what, we, what might happen when we make changes, when we intervene in the system. 
There's lots of ways to intervene in the system. They're not all good, but they all have massive system-wide effects. And we want to expand our choices and identify the ones that have the maximum leverage. Uh, you can push hard and hard, harder on systems and not get anywhere, but if you find the right tipping point, the right leverage points, uh, uh, sometimes a light push, a light intervention can actually have a very large effect. And we have to learn how to find those leverage points. So this means um, really knowing our, our, our problem. And there are a lot of problems that we have to deal with. There's simple problems, there's complicated problems, and there are complex problems. And often in systems, we're dealing with complex problems. Health systems are complex adaptive systems, so we're dealing with complex problems, and we need to tackle these problems differently. And in systems thinking, we need to distinguish the kinds of problems we're working on. So when we're dealing with complex problems, it's often it's not clear what the problem even is and what the solution might be. So we're dealing uh, in, a, in a very slippery uh, situation a lot of the time. Uh, priorities uh, that are being applied may be questioned by other stakeholders. Uh, there's a lot more people involved when we deal with complex problems. And the context is critically important uh, in, in, in solving complex problems. Um, and often the solutions in one context may not be a solution in another context. We're often working on a much larger scale and we're working on longer and uncertain timescales uh, because systems are dynamic and they're changing, they, they keep evolving. And when you're dealing with problems like this is where we really need systems thinking the most. The usual thinking approaches, uh, we can keep using them on, on simple problems, but when we get to the really complex problems of, of systems, we need to think differently and we need to manage differently. And so when we deal with, uh, with uh, systems, complex adaptive systems, um, we need to look and be aware of emergent behavior. The system is generating its own behavior a lot of the time and often we're surprised uh, by what the system suddenly throws at us. So we need to be acting and learning uh, all at the same time and planning at the same time. We don't often have time to, uh, to wait and watch and figure things out. Um, we have to work sometimes with minimum specifications. I think the COVID uh, pandemic right now is, uh, is illustrating that very, very vividly for people all around the world. Uh, we need to work on multiple leverage points. Uh, this is pushing hard on one part of the system will probably have uh, very little effect. But the fact is that the, our health systems are complex, lots of moving parts, and sometimes tackling synergistically different parts of the system simultaneously will have a big effect. So we need to be creative, we need to look for these opportunities, and we have to understand the boundaries of, of the system that we're working in and build on what uh, emerges from the system and, and, and uh, ride with the system as it goes forward. So this is very different from how we would manage the usual complexity uh, or, or complicated systems that we uh, were used to dealing with. So there are some important c components in systems thinking. Uh, there are a lot of them, but I, I picked uh, four here just to, uh, to briefly introduce. Uh, I just mentioned boundaries. Um, you know, the health system as presently described by WHO has sort of six uh, building blocks. Um, and so in a way we're, they're nested, uh, whether it's governance or financing, or human resources or information or service delivery. Uh, uh, and financing and so on. These are all subsystems that are nested in the health system, but the health system itself is nested in bigger social and political and economic uh, systems. So drawing a boundary on the system that we're, we're, we're working on intervening is an important uh, thing to do and to understand the, the communities that are, are there. And because there are so many communities, so many stakeholders, so many actors in health systems, then it's the interconnections uh, that are, are really important. What are the relationships, the social networks that operate there? Because this is where information flows, information moving around in the system um, is, is what creates these feedback loops because we're in a really a non-linear uh, situation. How complex adaptive systems are, are not linear. Everything works in loops. Feedback, what is an input in one part of the system is a, uh, and an output of one part becomes another input in somewhere else in the system. And there are things that accelerate or impede the flows. And uh, this is where understanding these blocks or these drivers can tell us where the leverage points are uh, for change. 
And then dealing again with all the actors, uh, these multiple perspectives, all, all the stakeholders will have different all, different realities within the system and different perspectives on it and different benefits from it. And we need to understand that. That's where things like social network analysis is very helpful, but also understanding the history, uh, what we call path dependency. Sometimes uh, once a, a system is moving down a certain path, it's hard to go backwards and uh, you have to find a way to navigate forward. And this is where our mindsets and our worldviews are, are very important. And so these seem like very abstract concepts at the moment, but uh, you'll find that as you get more comfortable with them, they're, they're, they're much easier to deal with. The problem is that we tend to break things down and deal with technical solutions in, in silos, and uh, this is our tradition, and uh, it, it goes very slowly with lots of setbacks, and, um, and often uh, we struggle to have the, the products that we want. Uh, these health systems are much more complex and much more adaptive, but we can find better ways to, to handle it. Um, you probably all are familiar with the, the log frame logic of, of, uh, of health systems where everyone is interested in the inputs and the processes, uh, the, the, those five building blocks which produce the service outputs of a health system, which result in the outcomes of effective coverage, uh, response of health systems and the ultimate impacts that we want in terms of improved health uh, and, and better equity and reduced morbidity and impoverishment and so on. Uh, the, the, the trouble is that's a linear understanding and systems don't work that way. And if we, if we keep expecting that we put some input in and we're going to get the exact outcome and out, uh, uh, impact that we want, uh, we will always be frustrated uh, to a large extent. We can do a better job by understanding that it's not linear and that things are all connected. Whatever we do in the system is um, is intertwined. Uh, we can't intervene in, say, health financing without having major effects on health information, on governance, on, on service delivery, etc. Anything we do in the system will have uh, widespread system-wide effects, and we have to anticipate those second-order effects because sometimes they will be negative. Uh, and, uh, and and disruptive. And what happens in between these building blocks uh, is even more important than what goes on uh, in, in them. So the system is not, we often say this, the sum of the parts, it is, it is more than that. And in fact, the, it's the product of the interaction of the parts. And this is a really important concept in systems thinking. So all complex adaptive systems work the same way, including health systems. They are self-organizing. They're constantly changing. They're, they're, they're open to the systems around them, the social, political, economic systems. Um, they have lots of tightly linked uh, components uh, which interface in a nonlinear way. Um, this history dependence that I, I talked about uh, that, that makes these systems work in a counterintuitive way often. And they're governed by surprising emergent behavior and feedback that we need to pay attention to. So this means we have to shift our attention. We, uh, we're, we're used to really looking at the trees and not the forest. We have to uh, be aware of the parts, but uh, really understand how they all operates as a whole, which means understanding the relationships among all the components, all the actors, and all the processes that go on in, in, in the system. Um, it moves us from understanding hierarchies to understanding networks, and there's a lot of great tools now for understanding uh, and analyzing networks of actors and power in the system. Uh, we have to get much more intuitive, much more synthetic in, in terms of un understanding how all things fit together, and that means nonlinear thinking. And we're not necessarily born to think this way. Um, some of us have to learn how to do that and, and practice it. So summing this up, systems thinking is really a discipline for understanding the whole system and a framework for really appreciating the interrelationships rather than things and the actions uh, that are happening. And looking for patterns of change, anticipating these patterns of change rather than just looking at static snapshots. Uh, what we often see in the system are the events. We're suddenly surprised by events. There might be a sudden doctor strike or, or uh, an emerging pan pandemic. Um, those are events, and that's, that's easy to see. But what is harder to see is what we have to learn how to do with system thinking is understanding those patterns and trends that are sort of below the surface 
and they are driven by system structure and the drivers of the system, which we have to understand much, much better. And they, in turn, are underpinned and driven by our, our mindsets, our predominant paradigms, the rules and policies of the system. And working at the base of this pyramid is where you have the biggest chance to really uh, affect change. And what we, what we say we have increasing leverage in terms of transformational change in the system and improving the events and what we see and what we want to see. Uh, so we want to get away from reacting to events and uh, as we are doing in say the pandemic right now and be uh, uh, and should have been with systems thinking be much better at, at seeing the patterns that were coming that we could predict things understanding the problems with our our overall systems and structures so we could design things better and actually reframe our, our mental models so we would be much better positioned to deal with the challenges and threats and changes that were, are constantly coming when it comes to health systems. So just to, to wrap this up, uh, we actually started 10 years ago um, and uh, at, the, at the first um, HSR 2010 conference uh, in Montreal, uh, released the, this first systems thinking book, Systems Thinking for Health System Strengthening. And two years later in Beijing, there was the, the uh, special issue of health policy and planning, which actually uh, showed countries' uh, experiences in applying systems thinking strategies. Uh, a few years later at, at uh, Cape Town was the release of the, um, at the conference of the uh, use of applications, a large anthology of an applications of system thinking uh, for um, systems, uh, for health system strengthening. And then uh, two years ago in Liverpool at the same conference, we released this uh, first handbook of methods for systems thinking for uh, for health research. And so it's really great that at this conference now we sort of bring this down, down to the ground with this session on how can systems thinking uh, help with, um, with district health management. And we're gonna hear from several uh, uh, frontline districts and how they've been applying some of these methods for systems thinking. But also uh, we'll hear later in the session how we can work towards building a community of systems thinkers uh, that is both uh, global, national, and local uh, to help move this field forward so that we uh, get out of our linear way of approaching system challenges and, and uh, have a, a stronger foundation for strengthening the systems and getting the health outcomes and social protection outcomes that we want to see in, in health and, and uh, society. So thank you for that. And um, uh, just to to uh, finish this off and re remind everyone that anything we do in the system will have system-wide effects and we need to be totally aware of those and anticipate those and get better at deciding what to do and how we're gonna measure it and how we're going to uh, monitor the changes that we look for. So thank you very much and I'll turn this back to Daniel who will now introduce quickly some of the tools that are, are most useful. So thank you.